Kenny here with Gardening Simplified. Today we're going to talk about electroculture. Not electric culture, but electroculture. So let's get into it. Electroculture is a process that harnesses the uh, energy or frequency of the magnetic field of the earth and the atmosphere uh, energy and it brings it uh, to the soil to improve the soil now this here right up here is a what you call an atmospheric antenna and what it does is it uh, harnesses uh, the electricity we say electricity but actually say frequency it's an antenna and it uh, pulls in the frequency just like you would use your TV antenna to pull in the frequency of your uh, favorite show. For those of you that still use antennas, for those of you that cable, you probably don't know what we're talking about. Some of you are youngsters. But anyway, what it does is the higher this antenna is, uh, the more voltage that is that's in the atmosphere and this is static electricity this same stuff that you can easily see in the winter when you uh go walking around and it zaps your uh you zap yourself on the doorknob or something whenever you're you're uh, scooting your feet across the carpet or something like that but this is uh, just copper wire now you can use aluminum you can use uh iron uh like galvanized or something like that uh, copper works good for atmospheric antennas uh, you can use a wooden pole and use a copper wire from your uh the antenna at the top on down this is just a, a simple antenna with copper up top this piece of copper tubing it's set over a piece of rebar so it makes it a little more stable and then it's just pushed down into the ground and now you do need moisture of the ground, but the, the thing about this is uh, what we're going to explain about electroculture. Now, there's a whole lot of videos out there now and a whole lot of information that there's, there's just nothing to substantiate. Now, uh, there is a guy from France. Well, actually, he's from Belgium, but he lives in France. And his name is uh, Yannick uh, Van Dorn. And he has been doing this for, for quite a few years. Now, he doesn't get real scientific into it, but uh, the results that he shows from different ones and different things uh, are provable results. And this is not something that's new. This is something that has been uh, going on since the uh, late 1700s that there's been books published. A lot of this has been in Europe. And uh, these uh, books and stuff with the information and, and the uh, different data that's there relate back uh, to further in the past even back to the time of uh, the pyramids and stuff like that so but what we're going to talk about is the effects now look like i got squash bugs taking over in here we just kind of smash these as we see them and we've been smashing a lot lately uh but what we're going to talk about is uh the the different ways of harnessing this now the you'll see a lot of stuff with little bitty spiral antennas that go into the ground and they do a little something but the actual uh distance that they work is as far as to uh sorry i'm getting sidetracked again but the distance they work is is a very narrow margin because uh, they in the energy that they pull in 
is very little because the higher it is up, the the more voltage it is of static electricity. And what that does is whenever it is harnessed and is brought into the ground, it actually uh, starts improving your uh, the microbes in your so your uh, soil micro microbiology. And a lot of people say, well, copper kills bacteria. Well, copper kills bad bacteria. It's, it's just like silver. Silver kills bacteria, but it kills bad bacteria. And why that is, I'm not even going to go into it or, or don't really care. It's just a matter of that's what you need to know. Now, what it does is it improves the good bacteria. And the good bacteria is what keeps your bad bacteria in check. That and the fungi too. And uh, some of these fungi that are bad fungi, well, we don't want them in our, our garden. This is a method that's going to change that. But it doesn't do this overnight. A lot of people, uh, you know, will say, oh, this is so much better. It does something also that improves the uh, moisture in the soil so that you don't have a problem about your soil drying out uh is quick and such as that so so in a drought condition uh an atmospheric antenna or a magnetic antenna will improve uh your your uh soil moisture or the amount of water that you're going to have to use now what we're going to do today is we've pulled out a lot of things in our garden but we've cleaned out our uh Victoria garden bed or our kitchen garden. Uh, this was our new space. We started this last uh, spring, or I say it's not that been that far long back. But anyway, we've taken out our tomatoes. We're uh, getting to where production was gone. We're going to put in some uh, later crops. But what we're going to do in here is we're going to rejuvenate these beds and we're going to install magnetic antennas. Now what magnetic antennas do is they increase the magnetic field in that area and they work to to where about a distance of a meter off each side or say say uh, three feet off each side of the antenna. The best is where the antenna is and it kind of gradually drops down where we're going to run two antennas one in this one and one in this row over here and we'll show you how to set up these magnetic antennas but uh, this is going to be an ongoing uh, series and I'm just going to call this part one and as we go along we'll follow the progress of this uh, like I say don't don't expect a, an overnight jump but but the results can be pretty significant. Okay. Now, what I've done, just took a hoe, and I've made a, a little trench. Now, like I say, your beds need to run north to south, uh, not east to west, because what you're doing is you're strengthening the magnetic field, and uh, if you try to do this east to west, you're going to have negative results because you're just going to disrupt the magnetic field. Uh, now, the everything is works off of frequency, and, and if you understand that, then you'll understand electroculture. Now, there's different types of uh, electroculture, just the human aspect or, or the human wave uh, in the garden with the plants and talking to the plants. And those of you that don't think that that's, does any good, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, you need to do some study. Uh, there's a lot of studies out there that, that show how positive response, how plants um, take and respond positive to it. And that's one aspect or the frequency of the human wave in the garden. So if you expect your uh, plants to do bad, your plants are going to do bad. You want to say, I don't have a green thumb. Uh, you already start out negative, and those negative uh, frequencies can cause a problem. And I have actually heard uh, uh, Yannick talk about 
tomatoes that he can't ever grow them, but then he finds out he's allergic to them. So, so uh, do plants know? I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to get into that. This is nothing new. This is basically, it's been uh, trying to push off like a lot of things, like they, they don't actually cover it up, but they uh, do a, a negativity towards it, just like uh, they try to tell you that synthetic fertilizer, and people just call that fertilizer. It's chemical fertilizer. It's synthetically made, and it's just like if you was going to eat synthetic meat, you know, could, could you live off it? You might. Would it be good for you? I doubt it. You know, and, and that's what we need to focus if we're going to be growing. Now, I do grow organic. I don't use uh, even organic pesticides unless I absolutely have to. Uh, it's very rare occasions. Normally, I pull things out just like if you noticed at the front of the video, there was some tomatoes right down at the end. Uh, that was the last one when we pulled them out. Uh, because when they get to where they're stressed and, and dying, bugs attack, the best thing to do is take them out of the garden. But anyway, we're going to go through this, uh, setting up this uh, magnetic antenna. And this is going to go in the ground. That's what the trench is for. And we're going to use... Uh, this galvanized fence wire, which is perfect. It's 14 gauge. It'll last for a pretty good while in the ground. You probably get a good four or five years out of it, uh, maybe more. And this will uh, set up the antenna, and, and we'll go through that. But what I'm going to do now is we're going to uh, take and get this stretched out. Okay, we're just going to stretch this out. Uh you want your wire kind of to be kind of straight. I mean, as straight as possible. And we're just going to cut it off and we're going to Hope that it stays. I'm going to, i got a clip here. I'm going to uh, put on this end the landscape uh, staple. <clears throat> and hope that it stays there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to bury this so it stays in this trench. Oh, watch it so it don't kink. It right out of my hand. Grab it right here and slide it. The Perils of Live video. Pull it tight. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, cover this up. Hopefully this a little bit. And it's kind of dry. Uh, I haven't watered this bed in a while, which is not good for my microbiology. Pull it tight. Hey. Can you pull it a little tighter? And what we're going to do is, you're. Pull it tight. Yes. We're we're going to we're putting this in and and then we're going to come back and we're going to rejuvenate this bed and as we do this. Uh, we'll have a, this will be a little bit deeper. Now you couldn't do this in a, a field that you're going to plow. You can put it kind of deep and possibly uh, after 
taken uh, have it a little ways under the ground uh, I'm trying to think if it's no deeper than 50 centimeters I, I believe now I don't know uh, but I believe that's that's the fact and and what happens is if you get too deep the effect is uh, gets less so uh, And, and you, in order to get the full effect, like I say, you don't want to do it too deep. That's just like if you have it spaced out too far. Uh, there's a noticeable uh, decline in the... Can you pull it a little? There's a noticeable decline in the, uh, the effect of it. So uh, for our situation here... We're not going to be plowing. This is no dig. So once this is set in here, it'll be in here for uh, a long time. And and what this does is, and the, the studies have shown that uh, the energy or it's the magnetic field and the the. Uh, energy from that field uh, increases uh, the micro microbiology and, and the thing about it is people don't understand is that uh, chemical fertilizer and I did go off on a tangent but chemical fertilizer doesn't feed the soil the plant can take it up just like just like you could take up a uh, synthetic food you know we, people take synthetic drugs they they take all kind of stuff that they don't know that's that's not real vitamins uh, there's very few vitamins that are uh, not synthetic and your body can't absorb them so you're taking them they're not doing any good now what we're going to do is let me pause just a second okay now i have a little cheap compass don't take much and you can see north the the red end points north now i have a magnet here and these are magnets that stack they're powerful magnets you don't need a real strong magnet in fact if you get too much it could affect it differently but you want to make sure that your magnet is placed the right direction and you see the compass turned the north end this way so that tells me the magnet is in the wrong direction now as you see it's lined up right because the north and south opposite of attract when it comes to uh a magnet uh, likes repel and so anyway what we got is we've got we've got a magnet uh, that's facing with the north end north now you want to put this at the south end of your wire and I got a wire down in here somewhere and now you can do this with your wire out of the ground but it's best to have it in the ground. Now, the reason I stack these magnets, if I had one, it could lean at an angle and that would change the direction. But when they're stacked, then that keeps them straight. Now, what I'm going to do is you can leave this magnet exposed, but it's just good if it's buried. Now, while I'm doing this and I'm getting ready to overlay with some more compost, uh, Let's talk about fertilizer. Now I fertilize, usually fertilize my bed, and especially if I'm fixing the planet. But I fertilize it and then put down my uh, compost on top. That way it's under, it's in the middle of a, 
a, a layer where it stays moist such as that but what i'm wanting to talk about fertilizer everybody is hung up on organic which i grow organic this medina here is organic granular fertilizer it's not real strong it's it's a uh, three two three but what i want to talk about organic fertilizer because a lot of people don't know they don't take the time to uh, learn and study about different things in gardening and you've got all these experts that's out there that knows everything so uh, and you just take their word for it but do you know that in order to be uh, considered organic fertilizer and to be labeled as, as such uh, that it's only got to be 95% organic it can be 5% of something else and what's that 5% you know, most of these fertilizers are made from uh, chicken litter. But there's things like medications that can be in there. It could be in anything. It could be 5% arsenic. Not to say it is. But what I'm saying is, is uh, organic is good, but don't think that you're, because it's organic, that there's nothing else in there. Now, I use compost. Now, it's not certified organic. But it's made from uh, wood chips. And this, this that was in this bed was not that good of a grade. And you can see there's, it's kind of really coarse. Uh, so it didn't do as well as it would have. Now, whenever I overlay it, this, the next load I got is considerably better. Uh, and... Once it gets overlaid in there, and it is dry because it's it's been in the 90s. But uh, what I'm saying, if you're going to try to be organic, find something that you can think that's organic. Don't think that if you're using uh, cow manure, horse manure, stuff like that, that it's that you're not going to have a problem because they're one of the biggest contributors to uh, uh, problems in a in your garden because of uh, herbicides that sprayed on uh, hay and stuff to keep the weeds out. So, anyway, I'll get back on track and I'll get these covered up here. Then we're planting some seeds. Now, we're not going to trellis these, but we're spacing them two foot apart. Uh, I recommend that it is any three to uh, five foot. Of course, uh, they'll do fine. They've got plenty of nutrients here. Uh, but what I want to explain about uh, electroculture, and you can follow along, is what happens when you uh, take and set up an antenna like now this magnetic antenna that's under this uh, bed right here. It strengthens the magnetic field, and it gets rid of a lot of the garbage that is uh, being piped out all over the place. Uh, this was started back uh, years years ago, radio waves, uh, and such as that. All your electrical devices put out a certain amount of a, a frequency that interferes with the Earth's frequency, and especially cell phones, cell towers, 5G. 5G is one of the worst if you uh, tend to uh, do a little research on it. You'll see that it, it can actually uh, really affect seed growth. But what this does is it increases the magnetic field. We're generating it uh, in the same way that the Earth is, except it's stronger in this area. So what you can do is you can follow along. And you can see just how it affects it because uh, what happens are the crops will get bigger. Uh, you can actually, uh, there's a lot of people that uh, they don't use fertilizer anymore. And of course, and you'll have all these people say, oh, well, that's not possible because it is not in the soil. Well, when they test for your nutrients that's in the, the soil, they can see what's available, but they can't see what the microbes are are going to break down. Once you increase your microbiology, you'll start increasing your soil health and you'll start increasing your nutrients. Uh, vegetables that are grown in this way, uh, they've been tested. They're more nutrient dense. 
uh, the plants get bigger, but unlike chemical fertilizer, when the plants get bigger and they have less nutrients, uh, when you use electroculture, the plants get bigger and the vegetables have more nutrients. So, uh, and you can't see that. I mean, you, you might see that your vegetables are getting bigger and everything like that uh, based on how you naturally uh, grow them. But you can't see the nutrient di difference that they that they have tested side by side comparisons of them, and the nutrient density is way higher, noticeably higher, in in the others. I know they were talking about uh, essential oils in one that was thirty five percent more in the electroculture uh, control group than in the uh, non electroculture group so and in a lot of them they still use chemical fertilizer and stuff like that but like i say you're you're the one that's going to be eating that garbage and if and there's people that have that commented that the plant don't know the difference well and i tell them go eat you one of those uh lab grown steaks synthetic uh steaks see see how well it does for your body you know, uh, these, this GMO food that is not natural and how it affects the body and how it's anything that's said against it, it gets, it gets deleted, you know, and everyone's worried about GMO seed and this and that. You're not going to get GMO seed unless you get it from a farmer that signed some kind of a contract with them uh, because GMO seed is a, uh, you're going to have to sign a contract in order to get it. You're not going to go down to your uh, feed, your no local seed supplier. You're not going to go online to your local seed supplier and, and buy GMO seeds. It's just not going to happen. You, you can uh, you can think about it all day long, but it's just not going to happen. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to follow along on this, and we're going to discuss uh how this works as as we go along we're not going to give you the the baloney and and how uh, a lot of things work and we're going to add some more uh atmospheric antennas now this one was added and these these were planted uh the sixth of uh, June, and it's now the 17th of uh, July, and we've had some excruciating heat. We've been uh, bumping 100. Well, in the greenhouse, it, it got considerably higher. You got the fans on a big part of the day. But these were planted on the 5th, so it's been a little over five weeks that... Uh, these have been here almost six weeks, and we've been harvesting off them for a little over a week. So I'm going to say pretty close to once they were four weeks old, we we started harvesting uh, the squash off here. Now our others, of course, it's played out. The, the heat's got to them, and these don't like the heat, and the squash bugs definitely are coming in here, but hopefully they'll they'll end up uh, getting what's coming to them by, by me. But they're, these are already producing good. The the ones that are the furthest away from the antenna are a little bit smaller. The ones that are closest to the antenna or uh, bigger and now i'm not going to say that the antenna has made that much difference uh we'll have to see exactly you know and watch this but uh a lot of your electroculture people they'll put an antenna there and then they turn around in the next week and oh their plants are bigger and it's all because of you you know i don't I don't want to do that. I want you to see uh, 
uh, how quick. And these did produce uh, quick. They were really small when I put this antenna in here. Once I put it in, it like they shot up, and they've started producing. Uh, the plants that uh, you grow with electroculture, uh, like they're not only nutrient dense, they produce uh, more as far as they're, they're heavier producers. So you'll get, like off the squash plants, you'll get more squash and cucumbers, you get more cucumbers. So we'll watch that as we go along. But anyway, I hope you uh, found this entertaining and, and useful. And I hope you follow along. If you're not subscribed, we'll hit that subscribe uh, button and hit the bell, select all, so you'll be notified anytime I come out with a new video. And of course, really take the time to enjoy that gardening experience. Thanks for watching.